Hey everybody, I'm here with Mark and Kirsty, and we're talking about not what to do if you're feeling flat or if you feel like throwing in the towel, but what to do when you're feeling flat, when you feel as if I've had enough. There are things that we can do to encourage ourselves in the Lord. And Mark and Kirsty are up through chatting with them. They've got a couple of things that they do, which I found really inspiring. And I think they'll help you, um, not because you've got to say, oh, I'll just follow them or copy them or echo them, but because as the body of Christ, as we learn about the different things people do, it says, you know, I can do that. I could do that. And, you know, you can do it and you need to do it. So, um, Kirsty, I was talking to you about what you do and you brought up something and it involves even Sam, your, your, your little baby who's not so little anymore. Not, not little at all. Yeah. So what do you do? Um, well, I, when, I suppose when situations arrive and, and different things arise in our lives, I do think back to the um, good things that God has done for us and the promises he's fulfilled. And one was Sam, which um, was 17 years believing for a baby, having doctors tell me we can't have one. And um, yeah, I just look at him now and I just think, wow, God, God fulfilled that promise in our lives and, and just getting that, that word from the Lord to believe for him and to stand and yeah he whenever I look at him I just think of the goodness of God and what he's done and, and different as you say different like healings and different things in our lives and when you mull on those things and you think of you know the moment we held him in our arms the moment we brought him home from hospital of this just amazing miracle that you know the world told us we couldn't have yeah, yeah. Well, and that's so powerful because you know sometimes you think oh yeah we think of those things when we're in good moods and we you know Sam's playing and you think oh but, you know, there's a difference sometimes when you say, I'm actually choosing to think about these things and I'm choosing to remember when he's in my arms and I'm choosing to remember because right now the enemy's telling me this will never happen. And you spoke the same things before we had Sam. You're a liar then and you're a liar now. And so it's a matter of sort of actually recalling those things on purpose. And they don't always come naturally at those times. Yeah. Do you find sometimes you're like, I'm going to think about this on purpose? Yes. Well, I have to actually tell myself to stop thinking about the negative as well. Like you really have to make that decision because those thoughts come very naturally, like to start mulling on and then no, no, and cross over to the good things. And yeah, and just think about all the wonderful um, things he's done for us or, you know, the promises and everything. Yeah. Well, that's, that's powerful. And Mark, you, you added something when we were chatting that was not just about what you think, but about taking control of what you say. Absolutely. Um, I, I guess that's been a life lesson for me. Um, and I, I guess the first encounter I had where I realized how powerful the tongue was, was when I was diagnosed with, um, with, um, was it a stretch tendon? Yeah, tendonitis. Stretch yeah. Tendonitis in my arm. And I was told that, um, I needed an, an operation and that, um, there's a 50% chance it wouldn't work. And, I went home and I was feeling sorry for myself, so I called some people up and told them, and they came over and had a little pity party with me and told me they'd take me to hospital and get the <laughs> operation. And I was feeling really depressed because I was speaking the problem, and Kirsty came home and I told her, and my little lip was quivering as I was speaking to her, and she yelled at me and said, <laughs> whose report are you going to believe? And uh, I'm thinking, the pain was intense, and I'm thinking, it's all right for you. <laughs> You're not the one in pain here. But she was right. And I, deep down, I knew that. And That I, makes it worse, doesn't it? It does. It, it's, it's, it's one thing being corrected. It's, it's worse when you know they're right. <laughs> and, and you could have done it yourself, but you just didn't. Yeah, exactly. So um, she, I'd been watching TV too, secular TV. And she said, no, you need to stop that. You put on a Jesse Duplantis, a Merry Heart Doeth Good. Um, we started watching that. And then we went on a little trip to Wilson's prom and we didn't realize how critical that trip was going to be, but uh, it basically made a biodome for us. We had no TV. We had no well-meaning friends speaking the problem. We couldn't contact anyone. We couldn't contact anyone. And I started reading scriptures. Faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. By his stripes I'm healed. Um, you have not because you ask not. And I realized I needed to start speaking healing into this arm. And not allowing those distractions from the outside world coming in. And that's where we, we saw the miracle. It was a so dead set no miracle. Operation. No operation. And prayer got 100% results. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it so did. That, that's awesome that, you know, having to take control of it and begin to 
speak and begin what you're saying over your arm, what you're speaking about your life, what your your prayer. And it's sort of, you know, yes, I had lots of friends who were giving me sympathy and empathy and, you know, it was all nice, but I was just speaking the problem over and over again. But in your time when you were feeling like that, it was a matter of, I need to take charge here. I need to lock in. Now, it was interesting. You change what you were watching so that you were starting to feed on different things. You begin to change what you're speaking and you had the result. And, and at the start, I love what you're saying. You know, it's all very nice, but your arm's not in pain. You know? and we all feel like that. You know, like if, you, if, you, if you're going through it, I'm going through it, you'd understand. You'd be, you wouldn't be so harsh on me. You'd be sort of kind. And there's a point where you need to actually be harsh with yourself at times and say, okay, come on. I'm, you know, I might not have a Kirsty that's going to come and help me to yeah. <laughs> snap out of this. Just snap out of it yourself and you begin to say, what am I doing? There's a way through this. But I've got to feed on some stuff. I've got to change what I'm speaking. And, you know, it's not, you know, not, not an overnight thing, but it was uh, um, not too long before that took effect and you got the breakthrough. So when you're feeling discouraged, well, you can recall to your mind and, and re- think about all the times when God has come through and learn from that and meditate. And let, that, let your heart go big with that. And at times take charge of what you're saying and, and the things that you're, you're feeding your mind so that you can... Um, come back to this with strength and, 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 and faith and not just be f- sitting there in fear and, and, and self-pity. So thank you guys for sharing. I really appreciate that. And I trust that's been an encouragement to you. God bless you.